All right, in this mini lesson, we're going to talk about, we're continuing our talk on solar energy in the atmosphere. Um, if you've not watched the video on kind of what energy is and the greenhouse effect, you should watch that one first. In this one, we're going to talk about air movement. Air movement takes place in our troposphere. And again, we're going to go in, in more detail on the atmosphere later on. Uh, for now, just know that the tropos that the atmosphere is made up of different layers and that the troposphere is the air layer that's closest to the surface of the earth that's the the atmosphere layer that we live in uh, number two air moves because of differences in heating and again if you watch the previous video you know that those differences in heating come from uh, differences in latitude in, in the way that the Sun heats up our planet. Warmer air naturally rises and cooler air sinks. The differences create what are called convection currents and winds. So again, winds come from those differences in heating that then result in warmer air rising and cooler air sinking. Got a diagram coming up here. Take a look at that. Yep. Uh, convection currents and winds. And again, we've studied convection cells in, in other units, talking about the interior of the Earth having convection currents. In this unit, we're talking about convection currents in the air. Uh, here we see, again, on the left, we have cooler, denser air that wants to sink. As it sinks, that's going to cause higher pressure. So if you are a person standing down here, um, you may not feel that air pressure, but we have instruments that actually measure uh, the, the force of the air pushing down on us or pushing down on the surface. And so when air sinks down, it, act, it will increase the uh, air pressure and we can measure that with a barometer. Over here on the right, uh, we can see that that cooler denser air is actually sliding under the warmer air that warmer air is less dense you might think of that as being lighter um, and it wants to rise up because it's less dense uh, those molecules are moving around faster and they're farther apart that makes it less dense and therefore wants to rise if the air is rising again if you imagine a little little guy standing over here with his barometer that barometer is going to uh, measure, it, it is still going to measure the, the weight or force of the air on it, but that force is going to be less because the air is actually rising up. And so when you have this, this type of situation where you have air rising in some places and cooler air sinking in others, we get what is what are called convection currents, kind of this circle of, of air as it moves around. You can actually um, experience convection currents in our room or um, in, in most rooms, especially during the winter, um, this time of year as I'm recording this, uh, you'll feel that, um, that different parts of the room, how the um, ceiling is much warmer than, than the floor and, and so on. You can actually feel those, those currents. Um, and actually in the summertime too, um, if you've ever, if you're ever in a warm room during the summertime, uh, standing on a chair or on a ladder up towards the ceiling, you'd probably notice that it was much warmer than down towards the floor. Same process that happens in our atmosphere. Local winds, we're going to talk about local and global winds. Local winds are winds that blow over a limited area. These are kind of smaller areas. Um, small being a kind of a relative term. Small might mean, you know, over an area the size of Michigan or the United States, but those are still considered local winds. Um, and, you know, over our own town as well, those are all local winds. Uh, they are influenced by things like the local geography, um, and then also uh, such as nearness to an ocean or bodies of water. Uh, we live in, in Michigan and if you've ever been over to the lakes you would notice 
kind of this next thing too, land and sea breezes. And even without going to the big lakes, you can notice land and sea breezes at smaller lakes. Talk more about that in this next slide here with a diagram. Here we go. Uh, sea breeze. Uh, winds are always named by where they come from. So a sea breeze is a breeze, again breeze just being another word for wind. Uh, a sea breeze is wind that is coming off from the sea or coming off from water. A land breeze then is a breeze or wind that comes off from the land. Later uh, we'll, we'll talk about westerly winds and easterly winds. A westerly wind like we have here in Michigan is wind that comes from the west. That's where we get most of our winds. Anyways, back to sea breeze and land, land breeze. The sea breeze um, is a result of these, this uneven heating and cooling, these convection cells. Warmer air is, is cooling um, and descending, coming down. So as this warm air rises up, air heated over land and rising, so the land heats up, causes the air above it, to heat up, that air rises, but eventually it will cool down, and the air over the water is actually cooler than the air that is, um, the water itself would be cooler than the land, and the air above it would be cooler, and so we kind of have this warmer air rising up, cooling down, and having this cooler air that's over the water. As this warm air rises up, that cooler air that's over the water will rush in to, to take its place. So um, you have a breeze moving off from the water onto the land. That's going to happen during the daytime. At nighttime, the reverse happens. The land will cool down and the water relative to the land will actually be warmer. So the warmer air um, which is the result of the warmer water, will rise up over the water and the cooler land and therefore the cooler air that's over it will rush in to take its place. So you get this convection cell kind of happening in an, in an opposite direction. Um, as, as a kid um, growing up around the lake and spending a lot of time camping around um, local lakes here in Osceola County, uh, we actually, you know, experienced these land and sea breezes. Didn't really know the science behind it as a kid, um, but we always, we always noticed that the water was, you know, cooler than the land usually. Um, pretty much always, you go into the water, it was cooler than the land. And you'd always feel that nice breeze if you're sitting on the shore during the daytime. Um, you could sit along the lake and feel that breeze coming off from the lake. And then uh, right around uh, dinner time, as the sun was starting to set, things would get real calm and there wouldn't really be a wind going in either direction. And at that point, you, you kind of have a balance between the, the, the temperatures. And so we didn't have real hot air or real cool air over one or the other. They were about the same. And if the air temperature was about the same over both, then you wouldn't have a breeze. At nighttime, doing a lot of camping around that lake, you would actually you could actually notice the wind blowing back out onto the lake. And again, that was because the water at nighttime would be warmer than the, the land. And um, probably not the safest thing to do. We always stayed close to shore, uh, but we would actually go swimming at nighttime because the, the water felt so warm when compared to that cooler air. Global winds. Global winds, like the name implies, occur um, on a much larger scale than the local winds. So global winds, winds occur in belts around the globe. I've got a diagram of that in the next slide. These are caused by unequal heating of Earth's surface. The Coriolis effect, again we'll talk more about that in our atmosphere unit, um, but the Coriolis effect causes global winds to blow on a diagonal over the surface and because the um, because of the spinning of the earth 
um, it's going to have an effect on those winds. We'll just cut, we'll leave it at that for now and go into greater detail later. Uh, unequal heating also causes what's known as the jet stream higher up in the troposphere. And again, we'll, we'll go into greater detail of that in our atmosphere and weather units. And here's a diagram of the, kind of those global wind belts or global wind patterns. Um, we kind of have a high, we have high pressure here in this area, um, low pressure in here, low pressure in around the equator. And these are what's called the trade winds. These are called the westerlies, and these are what are known as the polar easterlies. We're up here in the northern hemisphere, um, somewhere around this area, and so we actually have um, westerlies in where we're at in the northern hemisphere. All right, so that's it for our notes. Um, and again. Um, encourage you to watch that brain pop wind animation and take a few notes and uh, I'll stop the video at this point and we can actually watch that in class or you can watch that on your own.